Hyperland is back in the news once again. Or maybe not, because this went public, and then it was fixed within a matter of hours, and most people probably don't even realize that anything happened in the first place. There was a very interesting vulnerability with Hyperland's plugin system. So, stepping back just a little bit, Vaxry's been doing what Vaxry does best, writing way too much code and being edgy on Twitter. So, recently he wrote this blog post, writing my own malloc to fix my trampolines. Not the trampolines you jump on, this is a programming term. As it describes in an earlier post, advanced trampoline hooks in x86 Linux. Hyperland uses trampoline hooks to let plugins call their own code before or after a chosen method is executed, allowing them to change the inputs, modify the outputs, call some additional code, or block the function from executing. It's a very powerful API, allowing for the ultimate integration with Hyperland. To the point though, one person asked me, why not just make a list of function pointers and call them? Well, I'd have to stick C++ code at the beginning of each function in the source. That kinda sucks. I could also do the same via assembly, but that's like making a trampoline for every function, regardless whether it's used or not. Inefficient. Another reason is that trampolines are simple, and most importantly, they just work. The only downside is the lack of portability across architectures, but that would come with any method of hooking, unfortunately. So, with this system, it does limit it to AMD64, x86-64, basically what you typically use on the desktop. Some people are complaining like, oh, this means it breaks on an arm. Yes, it does. That's a completely separate side problem that I might save for another video. The point of this video is a vulnerability in the plugin system. This was reported by Sam James over on the OSS security mailing list, which you might recognize as the place the XZ vulnerability was reported. Now I'm sure he does other things, but Sam James is a Gen 2 packager. So, Hyperland seems to have committed an interesting homebrew malloc implementation, which is fine in theory, but the reasons for it existing and how it works are not so fine. First, it relies on writing an object file at a predictable path in slash TMP and reading it back later. It was needed to facilitate a trampoline, which looks unsound. The whole hook system looks terrifying. There are some primitives that may be useful even once the hook setup is done. I have charitably termed the mechanism not robust. I haven't reported it upstream because of the hostility on other matters. I don't feel too guilty about not having reported it, given it fell out so immediately upon inspection. I don't plan on spending more time on this, sorry, but I felt like I had to share it. If this is the only thing you read about this, you would have literally no idea what the vulnerability is supposed to be. This is not well written. As such, when Vaxby saw this, this is what he posted over on Twitter. Maybe not the best response to someone saying, hey, there's a security vulnerability in your application, but considering that this didn't even properly explain what it was, I get it. Now to accompany this, Sam also wrote it far more coherently over on his Mastodon. Following this, since Sam didn't go and do so, a issue was made over on the Hyperland GitHub, possible plugin system vulnerability, which basically just links to the post on Mastodon, along with the OSS security post. And Vaxry responded in typical Vaxry fashion. It's a joke and not a CVE. Nobody even assigned to the CVE what you want about. There is a CVE assigned now, but that was done after the fact. Anyways, it's fixed already. So before the issue was even made on the GitHub, even though he was joking about it on Twitter and saying, hey, this doesn't matter, this is not a vulnerability, he already went and fixed it. I've told him this myself, I don't think this is the way he should have initially communicated about it. If you want to go and post memes and do so after the fact, that is totally fair. But the first thing you should be doing is explaining what is actually happening, because as it currently stood, the only explanation is from this right here. And users want to know what's actually going on. Is this a vulnerability? Is this nonsense? Like, what's actually happening? This being the first response makes it seem like Hyperland just doesn't care about security. And as you can see, he fixed it as soon as he was aware of it. So he does, he's just terrible about talking about it. What he should have done is similar to what the Kale developer does. 
Occasionally, he gets these absolute nonsense AI bug reports. Some of them are just hallucinations. Some of them are pulling up old code from versions that were fixed ages ago. And what he does is explains exactly what is happening and reassures the users this is a problem, but it was fixed a long time ago. This isn't a problem. It's AI hallucination. Or this is the exact implications of what this vulnerability actually is. However, I also don't like the way that Sam handled this because this is not how you handle what you think is a serious security vulnerability. Even if you hate the developer of the project, which is clear from what Sam has said here, even if you have no interest in working with them, the bare minimum you can do with a vulnerability is post and ghost. Tell them about the problem and then just don't work with them to fix it. Because if you think you have a serious security vulnerability and the first thing you do before telling the developer is going public, that's really disrespectful to the users of the application. Hypeland is incredibly popular and if you think you have something very serious, you've just put all of those people at risk. So I spoke with Vaxry and got him to explain exactly what the implications of this issue are. This is what he probably should have just posted on Twitter from the start. The hook system used by some plugins would save assembly to slash TMP, call CC, call the C compiler, and then read the compiled bytes from the same file. Any user could technically inject some bytes there during the milliseconds that this was happening and have Hyperland run different assembly. This file in the temp directory would be stored in slash TMP slash hyper, which is a problem, but not really a major one. It's a problem because if you have multiple users on that system, both running Hyperland, they're both going to try to read things from the same directory, which might cause things to conflict, which could be a problem. The bigger problem is the permissions of the file, 777. This means the file is fully accessible to every single user. Now, to exploit this vulnerability, the Hyperland user needs to be making use of not just any plugin, but specifically a plugin that makes use of the hook system, so that trampling system we talked about earlier. If they do, the file is going to be temporarily saved in this directory. So there is a very brief period after the plugin is compiled and before the plugin is loaded where you can replace what is there in that file and then run arbitrary code. So in a limited sense, this could act as a privilege escalation vulnerability. I say limited for a very good reason. So if you have a low privilege user and then a high privilege user both operating on the exact same system, the lower privilege user could modify the assembly before it is loaded into the high privilege user's instance of Hyperland and then run arbitrary code as that user. Now this only works as users that are currently logged in making use of Hyperland. This is not going to give you access to the root account unless the user is running Hyperland as the root user. It'll only give you access to another user operating on the system. In that very niche context, that is bad and should not be possible. However, there aren't that many people out there running Hyperland on a multi-user system. If you exist, please let me know, but I certainly haven't met anyone who meets this criteria. If it is not a multi-user system, you need to have a user that has already been pwned. You need to have a user that has already been compromised with some various other malware or exploit that might be out there. At that stage though, there are a lot simpler things you can do than modify a plugin in Hyperland. You have access to a user on the system. You can do anything that user can do. Again, this was a vulnerability and should not have existed in the code base. But the conditions to actually exploit it are fairly niche and most people were never going to be affected in the first place. Now, Vaxry also adds it requires millisecond precision and the ability to run code all the time, not just at a random point. If you have a user that has already been pwned, these are fairly trivial things to do, whether it's your current user or another user on your system. There are a lot more consistent things you can do if you have a pwned user, but besides the whole pwning a user thing, it's not that difficult to pull off. 
Now, it turns out this was not the only problem with the slash temp directory. So, whilst Vaxxer is talking trash over on Twitter, someone by the name of Solar Designer came in. This is a very important person. They are the open world founder and an OSS security maintainer. You know, the mailing list we had before. And he didn't just make one comment and then leave. He worked through the problem with Vaxfree, explaining everything that's going on and why this is being considered a vulnerability. It is unsafe to create files in a world writable directory without OXL. If you insist on keeping the hooking mechanism, you could at least fix the vulnerability, e.g. by using make the temp and creating the files in the subdirectory. And OXL basically means error if you try to create a file and that file already exists. Vax replies by saying, anyone that can write there can also execute rm-rf slash. So what's your point? Oh, I missed you already use a subdirectory called hyper. So slash tmp slash hyper. I haven't checked how you create it, but this may not be that bad then. A make d temp temporary directory could still be better if the name doesn't have to be fixed to prevent DOS by other users, but that's minor. So don't use the same directory for every single user because if you have multiple users on the same system, they're going to be trying to read from the same location. Instead, just randomly generate the directory name. Then he immediately fixed it. Also changing the perms from 777 to 700, basically meaning only the current user can do anything to the file, other users are not allowed to touch it. Wow, that was quick. However, now that I grabbed the entire tree, you also use slash tmp slash hyper in other places, perhaps as a trusted directory, yet you set it to 777. There's also race conditions between make dir and chmod, during which an attacker could change dir, maybe just use non c++ make dir. So tmp slash hyper is 777, but each sub dir, which is the dir where sockets and logs and other things are, is 770. So the user and the group can do anything they want, but other users are not allowed to touch it. I could use make dir, if I remember correctly, it has perms on start, which he did immediately. This is not mentioned further in the thread, but since this interaction, he's changed all of the hyperfiles in the temp directory to permission 700. So only the current user can do whatever they want to the file, nobody else can touch it, which is the way it probably just should have been from the start. There was absolutely no reason to give extra permissions when other users do not need to interact with the file. There's also been one more very important change, removing CC from the hook system, so it no longer has that intermediary assembly step. This basically just eliminates the problem entirely. Was this situation a vulnerability? Yes. Should it have ever happened? No. But all you needed to do was tell the developer, and it'd be fixed in a matter of like three or five hours. Not three or five weeks, not three or five days, basically before most users even heard about it happening. This is not XZ 2.0, but it is a fairly important, if fairly niche, exploit. On a fun note, Hyperland now officially has a CVE attached to it. It is still awaiting analysis, but this is 2024-33904. And considering other CVE ratings we've seen in the past, if this does get a rating, is probably going to be way too high. I think my greatest skill is forgetting to record outros lately. I don't want to turn the lights back on, but if you like the video, go like the video. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did you know about the vulnerability happening? Did you pay attention to things being fixed, or were you completely unaware? Let me know down below. So if you like the video, I already said that. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of them, these missing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and now you understand just how bright my lights are. Like this.